Yo, what's going on guys, Yorks Biker here. Um, so yes, in today's video, basically what I'm gonna be doing is telling you um, the five things, well, five things that I don't like about the Triumph Tiger 800. Um, in the previous video, I did tell you the five things that I like about the Tiger 800. So if that's something you want to find out more about, click the link above and it'll take you to that, obviously that video. Um, but if you wanna know what I don't like about the bike, stick around, stay tuned, and we'll get cracked on. So, point number one, um, this is in no particular order by the way, it's just five things um, that I don't like. Um, point number one being the Triumph fuel gauge. Um, it's not just down to the Tiger 800, I think it's on most Triumphs to be fair. Um, but basically when you're topping the fuel up, um, it doesn't register um, that, you've, that you've obviously filled the tank. It takes a couple of miles for it to, uh, for it to read it and adjust properly. So. So on to point two, um, it kind of follows on from the first point with the fuel gauge, um, but the second one that I don't like, it's still got to do with the clocks, uh, and basically I just think the, they may have changed on the TFT monitors, but on this particular bike, um, functioning the dashboard's not the best, There's just it's, the, the menu's just far too complex for me, not for me personally, but I just think it, it could have been a lot simpler, um, there's, there's just far too many options. So we'll just give the angle a quick change and I'll, I'll show you. So obviously I'm on the first trip meter here. We've got two buttons here. Now on the later models they did get uh, symbols put onto these but with mine being one of the first ones it's they're obviously not on there. So it's a little bit more tricky to figure out. But you press the bottom button, it takes you through a list. So we've got the time, um, average miles per gallon, instantaneous, average miles per hour, uh, and then obviously back to your trip and your fuel, that's your fuel range and then you're back obviously to the time but then you press the top button it takes you to trip 2 so then we have obviously the second trip which I've reset uh, obviously fuel range it's the same sort of uh, sort of deal, then you've got the, the time ridden uh, obviously average miles per gallon, instantaneous average miles per hour and obviously then the miles that you've done on that trip but I think there's also another menu so you've got your setup menu you've got your time set menu uh, but then you, you're skipping points but you get to time set you click next and it actually takes you to set the time which is it's awkward unless you wanted to keep it on one thing I, I don't quite like it so, uh, dislike three. Oh, the bike's doing its bloody thing now. Yep, stopped. Uh, so, yeah, point three. Um, I think for me, it's got to probably be the worst one. Um, it's my fault for obviously buying one of the uh, the earlier models, so I wish I did sort of save up a little bit extra and buy a later model. Um, but point number three, it's got to be the silver frame. I'm just not digging it anymore. Um, I, I know that the, uh, the new... Tiger 900s, the GT Pro I believe it is, or the Rally Pro, whichever one it is, um, I know that's got a white frame, so it, it kind of resembles that a little bit, but I'd, I'd rather just have a black one, <laughs> either a black one or a grey one, I'm not too fussy, but silver, nah, I've gone off it. And then we're on to point four, uh, it is down there again, but basically the fourth point that I don't like about this particular bike uh, it was fixed on the later models, I think it was 2015 it got fixed. Um, but between 2011 and 2014, the Tigers had a problem with the starter motors. Um, I have had the issue with this one, and it has been fixed. It happened to me at around 15,000 miles, 15,000, 16,000 miles, I believe. Um, basically, the, bike, the, the starter motor gets too hot. So then if you end up stalling a bike or turning it off for whatever reason, you can't then start it again until it's cooled down. Uh, it was a bit of a problem when I went on a trip around the Lake District with my dad, we did some off-roading. Um, the bike, obviously, I, I stalled the bike, I, I dropped it, it fell on the side and all sorts, but uh, 
we had to sit around for the best part of half 30 minutes to 40 minutes um, waiting for the bike to cool down just so that we could get going again like I said when that was starter motor issue um, I did have fixed along with um, my gear selector pin uh, the gear selector fork one of the pins snapped off so while it was in for the starter motor I had that fixed as well so uh, now that it's got an upgraded starter motor um, all is good can just do what I want with it <laughs> But yeah, point 0.4, it's got to be, the, on the earlier model anyway, it's got to be the, uh, the the starter motor issue. And as if by magic, that takes us to point 0.5. So we're almost done, guys. Um, so yeah, the fifth point, well, the fifth thing that I don't particularly like about the Triumph, um, I've not ridden the 1200, so I can't say whether it is the same, but apparently it's even worse. Um, it's got to just be the weight of the thing. Um, just normal day-to-day -day riding, you don't really have an issue with it. But when you are actually taking it off-road um, and you're doing bits and bobs here, there and everywhere, um, you do sort of realise how heavy uh, the Tiger can be. Um, obviously not as big as you, and heavy as your GSs and stuff like that, but once you're off-roading, you probably don't want something this big. I'd, I'd, off-roading, you, you want something that's uh, like a little 250 or up, even up to a 450. Um, but if you wanted to do some off-roading on one of these, some serious off-roading, um, I'd probably go down the route of trying to lighten it somehow. I don't know. Um, it's not presented too many issues, um, but it's just now and again when you've been coming over rocks and stuff like that, you do notice it trying to go one way or the other. Uh, so yeah, that's the fifth one. It just tends to be a little bit too heavy now and again, um, but nothing, oh, nothing too major. So that's the five things I don't like about the Triumph Tiger 800. Um, as I said, you can check out the five things that I do like about the Tiger 800 by clicking the link that was provided above. You can also find it in the description below. Um, don't forget, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, um, and you can now support the channel by uh, heading over to the Patreon page. That will also be in the link below. Uh, you can do that from as little as a dollar a month. I'm not saying that you have to do it, but if you if you do want to, then the obviously the ability for you to do that is there. Um, but yeah, that's it for today, guys. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to ride safe, keep a sticky side down, and turn on the. Uh... So yeah, that's all for today, guys. So as always, don't forget to ride safe, keep the sticky side down, and until next time, I love you all. <laughs>